Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Let us begin by saying, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. The psalm is 133. Oh, oh, how good and pleasant it is 
when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon and falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walk walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have you ever made a mistake or really messed up in some way and it was used as an example of what not to do? I mean, it might not surprise you, but especially when I was in grade school, this, well, it happened to me probably more times than I care to think about. I think this is what may, we have, may have done with Thomas in today's gospel passage. Thomas has become the example of doubt par excellence, and he is often cast in a negative light. I've heard people say to someone, well, don't be a doubting Thomas, as if that's a bad thing to be. In the story we just heard, Jesus comes to the disciples on the evening of the resurrection. They are huddled together in a locked room because they are afraid. And it just so happens that Thomas isn't with them at the time. And we don't really know where he was or what he was doing. We just know from the story that he wasn't there. But the disciples who were there see the resurrected Jesus, and he offers them peace amid their fear. And he shows them his wounds on his hands and his side. And later, when Thomas comes back, they're so excited, and they tell him everything that happened. But Thomas doesn't believe them. He says, 
you know, unless I can see it for myself, I don't believe you. So as the story goes, a week later, still afraid and still behind locked doors, Jesus comes again. And this time, Thomas is there. And again, Jesus offers his peace to them. And he goes to Thomas and he shows him his hands and his side. It is actually a beautiful moment. But, but somehow, and I'm not quite sure why, Thomas has been saddled with this nickname, Doubting Thomas, and it has stuck with him down through the ages. I mean, maybe part of the reason is that many of us can easily identify with Thomas's skepticism or doubt. I mean, who among us hasn't struggled with faith or belief? We've probably all heard the phrase, don't believe everything you hear and only half of what you see. So I wonder, when have you been told something, maybe by someone close to you, that you questioned? Or when have you seen a commercial or something online and thought, yeah, I don't think that's really true? Regardless of why we associate with Thomas so closely with doubt, I'm not sure, but I think there is another important message that we can take away today. And it has to do with why this particular gospel passage is always selected for the second Sunday of Easter. No matter if we're reading Matthew or Mark or Luke, when it comes to the second Sunday of Easter, we turn ourselves over to John and this story about Thomas. It seems odd, at least to me, after celebrating the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the centerpiece of our faith, God's ultimate redeeming act. After all of that, we hear this story about Thomas. I mean, what about this passage is so important that we return to it year after year after year. I think it's because the story isn't only about Thomas or about doubt. I think it's also about what Jesus does when we are uncertain about things or when we are afraid or having a difficult time picking up the pieces after going through something in our lives that is heartbreaking and painful. The story is about how Jesus comes to us, how Jesus moves toward us, how Jesus seeks us out precisely in these difficult times. Thomas and the other disciples were afraid. I really want to underscore that. They were afraid. They were distraught. They were beside themselves about all that had happened. I mean, they were doing good just being able to put one foot in front of the other at that time. Maybe you felt that way. And when they were in this difficult place, it was Jesus who made the first move. Jesus who came to them, who walked through a closed, locked door to get to Thomas. It is Jesus who is determined to reach for us. It is Jesus who refuses to let a locked door or anything else come between us and him. So when you are concerned about a loved one, when you're struggling in a relationship, when you're dealing with conflict at work, or feeling overwhelmed about a task that you need to do, or 
grappling with a decision that you need to make, or going through any kind of grief, this story sits right here in front of us. Time after time after time to remind us that Jesus will come and find us. Michael Ramsey, who was a former Archbishop of Canterbury, he said that, encourage us when, when, when we feel spiritually empty, when we find ourselves unable to pray or just for whatever reason are disconnected from God, Michael Ramsey says, tell God, I want to want you. And he says, if you can't even say that, then just say, I want to want to want you. And believe and trust that God will seek you out. That God will step through whatever walls or barriers or resistances that hardship builds around us. And when he does that, it will be out of love that he will love us in those times, that he will offer his peace to us in those moments when everything might feel confusing or lost or adrift. Maybe we read this story every year to remind ourselves that we are never alone with our worries or our concerns or our uncertainties or our heartaches. That like with Thomas, Jesus will come seeking us out over and over and over again, offering his very self, his very presence to us. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm in that spot and Jesus comes to me, I don't always recognize him. Sometimes Jesus might come in the form of someone who is willing to listen to your story. Or he might come as someone who holds your hand or offers to say a prayer with you. Sometimes Jesus is present in a much-needed hug, or he might come in the form of, of reconciliation or forgiveness. Jesus is present to us in surprising moments of clarity, like when walking through the woods or watching a young child at play, even in the comfort of a pet. And sometimes Jesus comes to us in a moment of peaceful solitude, right smack dab in the middle of a hectic day. But no matter how Jesus comes to you, he will always come offering the gift of his very self, his generous and his life-giving presence. I wonder how Jesus might come to you this week. The story of Thomas tells us that the good news of Easter is more than cheery celebrations or a worry-free life. Instead, the story tells us that Easter, that Jesus' resurrected life that lives in us, it unfolds through the ebb and flow of our lives. Over the peaks and down into the valleys, in the good moments and in the difficult times. And it is precisely in these moments when we need God the most that he comes seeking us. May this be so. Amen. Please stand.
we'll take this opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He descended under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Father of the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. This is our faith. This is a faith that we profess. This is a faith that we are called to live every day of our lives.
we join our hearts and voices in praying for ourselves, our neighbors, the church, and the world. We, we pray, pray to you, you my Lord, Lord and my God. God. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Even as your people living in the world, as we praise your name, we recognize a twinge of fear and doubt in our hearts. We ask you to manifest your presence in our lives in a tangible and glorious way. We, we pray, pray to you, you, my Lord and, and my God. God. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We pray for your followers throughout the world, that they have an experience of your love for themselves and a genuine experience of love with each other. We, we pray, pray to you, you my Lord, Lord and my God. God. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We pray for those in authority everywhere, that they are sensitive to the needs of those they serve, that they create environments in which integrity, truth, and justice flourish. We, we pray, pray to you, my Lord, Lord and my God. God. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. We bring before you those who are on our hearts this day, who are suffering from spiritual, emotional, or physical pain. Today, we pray for Carol, Carol Tori, Ashley, Brian, Duke, Susan, Dan, Cheryl, Eric, Stephanie, John, Martha, Phyllis, Joyce, Libby, Sarah, Steve, Phil, Terry, Mary Ann, Christy, Ed, and Lester. Come into their lives with powerful healing and into their hearts with words of comfort and peace. Hold those dying today close to your heart and welcome them into your eternal light and life. We pray to you, my Lord and my God. Amen. Alleluia. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people. While we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Take some time and yell across the aisle if you like. Well, that's the one thing we, we don't have back yet is St. Matthew's piece that goes on for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, you know. Hugs, kisses, talk about the news, what you did last week. We know. It's, it'll come back soon, I hope. Well, good morning and welcome. <laughs> we could be outside. You know, this is good. This is good. <laughs> Um, are there any birthdays and anniversaries? We've not done this for quite a while. Anyone need a birthday blessing? No. All right. Well, you know, we do this every week, so you'll, you'll have an opportunity for that. Um, a couple of things, uh, a few announcements. As I said, at 8 o'clock, what would church be if there were no announcements? You know, we would not know what to do. Um, so a couple of things that I want to say is, if you notice when you drove in today, um, the grounds, I just think, if you would see what it's been over this past year to what it is today, it's pretty amazing. Um, we had our work day scheduled yesterday, and of course, it rained. But about 10 hardy souls came out and uh, cleaned up, raked, dug things up. I mean, there was stuff they were digging out. I don't know what they were. 
trees being cut down, little trees that didn't belong and all that kind of stuff. It was wonderful. And I just really want to thank uh, all of you who were here. If you were here working, will you stand up? All right. So, yes, Angie. So that's that clump sitting, there's two or three clumps sitting on the bench. Very good. So if you want it, you know, make sure you, you grab that. Um, truly wonderful. The other thing is, I, I know at Easter, I think so many people that have worked hard over this COVID period, and the group that I have left out, and I didn't mean to leave out, was all of the readers who agreed to, to videotape themselves and send it in week after week after week to read. That is no small thing. So for all of our online readers, please just give a, a round of applause. Please. All right. Um, April 20th is the next uh, go-round for the online Bible study, and that will be out on Zoom, so we'll, we will be doing that uh, this coming uh, April 20th. I said May, I think, in the earlier yeah. it iteration. Um, the other person I'd like to recognize is Ed and Sue Fain. Can you guys stand, please? Now, the one good thing about them is they're from Crawfordsville, which you know is my hometown. So it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like the center of the universe. But um, uh, Ed and Sue are members of St. John's Crawfordsville, and in the midst of the pandemic, Ed figured out how to put that camera, and I don't know how many miles of wire you had to run throughout St. John. It's an old building, actually the oldest church in uh, Indiana. Um, and so when we were thinking about the rest of our grant, like what can we do going forward, I really like this idea. And the first time I saw it in Zionsville, I was like, ugh, and my head was spinning, like how are we gonna do that? And I got connected with Ed and Sue and Ed, I can't, I don't know how many hours you were here um, and days, but you could come back and working with the sound, working with the camera, uh, all the wiring that had to happen, um, all of that. And Ed is an engineer, uh, which means that he has all these little symbols and things written on paper that make absolutely no sense to me. And he's like, well, we're going to do this. And like, Great, you know. Um, but I just like to publicly thank Ed and, and also his companion Sue, his wife Sue, uh, for doing it. Deacon Kathy. Hi, everybody. You, you all have <laughs> bodies. You're just not heads in a square. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this day because I'm so missing talking with people. So. Let's all hope that we can continue to stay in church. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, this coming Saturday, April 17th, we are going to have a dismantling racism workshop on Zoom that the diocese is sponsoring. It's with Dr. Catherine Meeks of the Absalom Jones Center of, for Racial Healing in Atlanta. I'm kind of coordinating it for the diocese will be a fabulous workshop. I know several people here have already signed up for it, and if you can get on indydio.org, you can register for that. It's free. April 24th, this next Saturday after that, we're going to do a holy hike at Fort Harrison, and I promise it'll be an easy hike, probably less than an hour. We'll gather at the Panera Bread on East 56th Street at 945 and kind of caravan in. Uh, if you don't have a park pass, you can get in my car or get in somebody else's car that has a park pass. And we'll hike, but it's going to be holy because we'll stop at various places and pray. And it's holy anyway because it's God's creation. And so it's, it'll be a very, uh, hopefully, wonderful experience. And we're not climbing any mountains. You know, it'll be a, an easy walk. And the last thing, do you want to talk about clipping of the church? Um, 
Clipping of the church is an old English custom coming, going back to the Victorian era. Uh, for the church's feast day or on Mothering Sunday or on Shrove Tuesday, the parishioners would encircle the church, hold hands, and say prayers of thanksgiving for the church and the church community. We're going to do the clipping of the church today because this is the first time back at St. Matthew's, and I know everybody's heart is full to be here and to be worshiping together. The weather's not cooperating, so what we'll do is encircle the sanctuary. And we won't hold hands, but we'll have just a 10-minute prayer service expressing our love for our church, our love of God, and our love of service. So please stay for the clipping of the church. Just a final thing that I forgot to mention earlier today. During the Lord's Prayer, it's our custom um, to reach across aisles and hold hands, and we just ask not to do that. You can do that in your bubbles, but not to do that with your neighbor at this point. Okay? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Let me get the book. Or
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by rising to, to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. We 
we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. Sanctify us also that we may be faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Matthew and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us stand together and pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, who has Amen. fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.